So to that end, I want to say welcome and thank you everyone on the up to the Science of South Carolina and the Greater South Carolina for joining us on this month's national webinar where we are featuring Adeline Lauren Quick, who is an occupational therapist by trade, um, who is also a certified Uh, so really embracing our inner child and being a transition this to a yoga mat to the class really start up. So without further ado, I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Lauren. Hey everyone, so I'm Lauren. Um, so thankful for everyone to be here today. I'm super excited. Like Taylor said, I'm going to guide you through what our kids yoga class would um, generally look like and then there's the Q&A afterwards. So um, if everyone will find me on their mat, the comfortable seated position, we'll go ahead and get started. Alrighty, so does everybody know what their yoga glasses look like? You're going to put your ring finger and your thumb together and you're going to make your own pair of yoga glasses. Now, these can be wacky if you need them to. You can put one upside down, two upside down. <laughs> Good. So these are your yoga glasses. And I don't want you to forget about them, okay? So we're going to put them on our knees. Good. So at the beginning of all of my classes, I like to do something um, that we call ohm. I like to ohm in. So ohms are very, very serious but we can start with some silly ohms today. So what I want you to do is I want you to take one finger and put it right over your lips and we're gonna do some underwater ohms. So has anybody ever done blah, 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 blah? You're gonna do that, but we're gonna say ohm at the same time. So on the count of three, we're gonna do some underwater ohming. One, two, three. Oh. Good, let's do it one more time. Are you ready? Get your finger on the count of three. One, two, three. Oh, good. Okay, we're gonna do one more silly ohm. This one is our, these are our Tarzan ohms. So Tarzan was a man, if you aren't familiar with him, he lived in the jungle. He was raised by the animals in the jungle and he would swing from branch to branch and from tree to tree and he would go oh. so he would beat on his chest so we're going to do that not too hard and not too soft get your tarzan arms ready yeah and on the count of three we're going to make our tarzan arms ready one two three oh. Good. One more time. This is our last silly ohm. Give it all you've got. Ready? One, two, three. Um. Good. So now that we've gotten our silly ohms out of the way, now we're going to do our serious ohms, okay? So does everybody have their yoga glasses? Put them on your knees. So we're going to do three serious ohms. Ready? We're going to try to do it all at the same time. So on the count of three, we're going to start our ohms. Ready? One, two, three. Um, good. Another one. One, two, three. Um, good. Now on this last one, I want you to put your hands, take your hands and put them on either side of your neck. And we're gonna do our last one on the count of three. One, two, three. Um, good. On that last one, could you feel the vibration in your body? Yeah. So ohm actually is the vibration of the universe or the heartbeat of the universe okay um so thousands of years ago 
um, or whenever the yogis sat down to meditate, they didn't have cars going by and airplanes going overhead. They just heard the sounds of the universe. And together they said that it sounded like OM and it felt like the vibration of the universe or the heartbeat of the universe. So that is why we take it so seriously and we ohm in the beginning of every class. Okay, so now we are gonna do some meditation. Does anybody know what meditation is? No? Okay, so meditation is a way that we calm and focus our mind right? Calming and focusing our minds is what meditation is. Um, and it is so important to meditate because sometimes we can have crazy, silly monkeys dancing and jumping around in our head, can't we? Okay. Can we act like those crazy, silly monkeys? On the count of three, I want you to stand up and act like a crazy, silly monkey. Ready? One, two, three. The crazy monkeys. <laughs> All right, Chris, come back. Okay, now this time, your crazy, silly monkey isn't just crazy, he's not just silly, but he also just stepped on a scorpion. On the count of three, let me see what that looks like. One, two, three. Good. Does anybody ever feel like that crazy, silly, just steps on a scorpion monkey is ever in our brains and dancing and walking around? Yeah. Yeah. So if we meditate, we can get those crazy, silly monkeys down to many. We can get it down to one. Sometimes our goal is to get it down to zero. So I'm going to teach you a way that we can do that to get our thoughts down from so many to one. To zero. So we're going to meditate. So remember our yoga glasses? We're going to use those, but this time we're going to use these other crazy fingers too. So there's four words. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Okay, so I'm going to turn my hands to the side. So you're going to take your thumb to your pointer finger for peace middle finger begins ring finger with pinky me so we're going to try that again all together peace begins with me got it okay so we're going to put our hands back on our knees i know you probably can't see mine go back just a little bit there we go and we're going to um, practice our meditation mantra. Peace begins with me out loud three times. Here we go. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Awesome. Okay, now this time we're going to do it while we whisper. Are you ready? Three times whispering, here we go. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Awesome. Okay, last time. This time we're going to do it silently, but in our heads. If you're comfortable, you can close your eyes. Just remember. You have your fingers to remind you of the words, okay? Now, you're going to close your eyes if you're comfortable. You're going to do three times in your head, and then we can stop whenever you hear me say, OM, okay? Here we go. Do we feel like we have less crazy monkeys in our heads? Good. 
good. Maybe we're down to one monkey or maybe even no monkey. Awesome. So that is meditating and that is to calm and focus our minds. So <clears throat> now I'd like to tell you guys a story. All right. So we're going to get moving and grooving. Are you ready? So whenever I do a pose, I want to see you do it with me. Did I ever tell you that I grew up on a farm? Okay, well, I grew up on a farm and all I wanted to do was sit and watch TV. I'll scoot back some. I just wanted to sit and watch TV. But my dad said that he needed help and I had to get out and help plow the fields. This is your plow pose. I said, Dad, all I want to do is sit and watch TV. He said, nope, you got to get out there and plow those fields. So every time I went to plow the fields, my cat, meow, meow, followed me. You know where else my cat followed me? To milk the cows. Moo. And you know who else followed me? My dog. Now this is a very special dog because he only had three legs. Good. Now we have a golden rule in yoga. What you do on one side, you have to do on the other. So switch legs. Good. And when I was done for the day, my dog and my cat all followed me to sit under a tree. <laughs> Good. And we took a nice long rest under my tree. Whew. That's the end of my story. And now we are going to do something that I like to call Sergeant Salutation. Now this, we have to turn on our listening ears on and you're gonna repeat after me and do the poses right after me. Before we get started, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. You might not be able to see with my screen. These are your namaste hands. Your hands clasped together, good. Your butterfly hands are your thumbs together and your wings spread wide, yep. And your butterfly goes up with your arms over your head and your butterfly comes down whenever your arms come down. Okay, so everybody meet me at the top of your mat. Okay, ready? Namaste. Butterfly up. Butterfly down. Ragdoll. Ragdoll, jump back, plank pose, plank pose, downward dog, upward dog, downward off, upward ow, downward dog, Jump forward, ragdoll, ragdoll, butterfly up, namaste. Good, we're gonna do it one more time and I'm gonna throw some tricks in for you. Who's ready? Here we go, <laughs> namaste, butterfly up, Butterfly down, ragdoll, ragdoll, <clears throat> jump back, plank pose, plank pose, downward dog, three-legged dog, three-legged dog, good, <laughs> upward dog, Downward, arf, arf, arf. 
upward out. Downward dog. Jump forward. Rag doll. Rag doll. Butterfly up. Namaste. Awesome, guys. Those are my sergeant salutations. All righty. Now, I would like to play you a song, and we're going to play called Every Little Cell. Ms. Taylor, can you play that for us? Here's a fun song that you can sing. Everybody up. The cell in your body ring. Pat every single body part when you hear this chorus start. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Shake yourself, it's good for your health. Every little cell is happy and well. Shake yourself, it's good for your health. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Bend your knees in chair pose, please. Every little cell is happy and well. Bend your knees in chair pose, please. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Reach up high to the sky. Every little cell is happy and well. Reach up high to the sky. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Reach for your toes in ragdoll pose. Every little cell is happy and well. Reach for your toes in ragdoll pose. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Here's one more, make a lion roar. I'm happy and well. Here's one more, make a lion roar. I'm happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Now let's do it faster. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Jumping jacks will strengthen your back. Every little cell is happy and well. Every little cell in my body is happy. Every little cell in my body is well. Good. All righty. So after that song, I think we should take a little break. <laughs> So I want everybody to lay back, lay all the way down, straighten your legs out, your arms are out by your side, maybe your eyes are closed if you feel comfortable there. We are going to take a little trip to our peaceful garden. First, I want you to lift up one of your legs, straighten your knees, point your toes, and squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And then drop it down with a big thud. Now your other leg. Lift it up, straighten your knee, point your toes, point, point, point. And drop it down with a big thud. On your arm. Lift your arm up in front of you. Straighten that elbow, make a fist with your hand. Squeeze that fist and then drop it down next to you. Same thing with your other arm. Lift it up, straighten that elbow. Make a fist with your hand and then drop it down next to you. 
What about your faces? Can you squinch up your face? Squish it, squish it, squish it. And then release it. Take a nice long deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. One more for me, in through your nose and out through your mouth. Okay, now that we are really still, I want you to imagine that your yoga mat has become your magical flying carpet. And I want you <clears throat> to feel so light that you lift up and take off for your journey to your peaceful garden. Imagine lifting up into the clouds and looking around and you see all of your friends from class today <clears throat> on their flying carpet. What a beautiful sight to see everyone so relaxed and so peaceful. When you're ready to come down from the clouds into your peaceful garden, slowly bring your peaceful, your peaceful mat into a comfortable space in your garden. It can look any way you want it to. You might be at the beach. You might be in the woods. You could be on a mountain or in your home. Make sure that this place is very special to you so that you can come back as often as you want. Use your imagination and look around. Maybe you see a big tree with a swing. Maybe there's a huge fence surrounding your garden and you can paint it any way you want. Pink, green, rainbow. Maybe you see mermaids or dolphins. Use your imagination and create whatever it is that you wish to see in your peaceful garden. Would you like to invite friends and family to come? Or do you want to enjoy it by yourself? Spend some time in your peaceful garden, creating the most beautiful, special place that you could ever imagine visiting. Now take one more look around your peaceful garden. Remember what it looks like so you can come back and visit anytime you like. Now imagine that your flying carpet is back up in the sky and floating you safely back our yoga class today. Now slowly roll over to one side, whichever side makes you most comfortable. And you can start wiggling your fingers, maybe rolling your wrists, start wiggling your toes, rolling your ankles. Maybe take a big, long, deep stretch arms over your head. I'm going to share something with you. Yoga isn't just about all the fun things that we do in class, like the poses, or the breathing, or the fun songs. Karma is when we do nice things for other people, and we don't expect to get anything back from them. We just do it because it feels good. I'm going to give you an homework assignment. Go home and practice some karma yoga by helping someone in your family. Maybe you can help the teacher. You could walk the dog when you're at home, set the table, clean up your room. You could be the door holder. Or you could pass out papers. Whatever you think would be a nice gesture is considered karma yoga. When you're ready, I want you to meet me in crisscross applesauce at the top of your mat. We're going to do some pranayama. I want everybody to 
sit up nice and tall, shoulders down, and we're gonna do some bunny breath. So bunnies breathe really short through their nose, don't they? So we're gonna do three breaths in through our nose, and then one out through our mouth. Three breaths in, one out through your mouth. Let's do it one more time. Ready? Those are your bunny breaths. And that's called pranayama. Now, remember our meditation that we did earlier where we had a word for every one of our fingers? Does anybody remember what those words were? Peace begins with me. Good. Okay. We're going to do it three times out loud. Let's go. Ready? Peace begins with me. Peace begins with me. Last one. Peace begins with me. And we're going to go straight to the ones in our heads. And we can stop whenever you hear me say, oh. Ready? our closing chant. Taylor, can you play our song? Thanks for joining our class today. Would you like to lead us in our closing chant? I'd love to. Om is the vibration of the universe, and Shanti is peace. So this is a good chant to do whenever you want to feel peaceful. Sit up straight and repeat after me. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, peace begins with me. children and lots of peaceful children namaste namaste thank you let me let me get out of my my beautiful yoga vibe here and we'll switch over to um asking you a couple of questions if that would be all right with you yeah of course okay I'm picking you up from the mat and placing you back on the actual desk. 
That was an incredibly fun workout. So this is way better than any cardio that I've done this week for sure. Oh, <laughs> it's so much fun. So much fun. It is, it's so apparent how much fun this would be um, for students of any ages and for, you know, for parents to be able to conduct with their kids. Um, so we wanted to ask a couple of, a couple of practical questions. Um, I think that, you know, within, within the work that we just did, you can see what is, you know, very easily applicable to the classroom. Um, and we wanted to also ask um, if you knew maybe some quick or brief poses that we could use um, to support maybe calming down and self-soothing. And, and if so, could you show them to us? Yeah, of course. Um, so some poses that could kind of help with like emotional regulation. Um, I would say the first one that comes to mind would be child's pose. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, you know, depending on our abilities. One would be knees together and you set your fanny back on your feet and then you can just lean your head forward. And just taking a couple of breaths here. Um, it really minimizes or decreases the amount of um, visual stimulation um, and environmental um, input that's going on that um, could be contributing factors to um, our emotional dysregulation, um, if that makes sense. Um, if, if that um, kind of too, is too easy or it's not as challenging as you would like, um, you can open your knees up and make them as wide as the yoga mat and arms out and then um, same thing with your head facing your yoga mat. Um, so that's a couple of variations of child's pose that would be helpful. Another pose that comes to mind would be downward facing dog. Again, that takes away some environmental um, factors that could be contributing to the um, dysregulation. Um, and it really helps you physically <laughs> shift your perspective. I mean, you're no longer vertical. Um, so downward facing dog um, looks something like this, um, where your goal is kind of to get your heels down on the mat. It looks different for everyone um, ability wise. And you're really pushing your palms into the ground and up through your shoulders and you're pushing your fanny back towards the back wall. Um, so you can see here, your literal perspective has shifted um, and physical perspective has shifted um, and that can um, really help with emotional regulation as well. Um, I would say um, legs, legs up the wall would probably be another um, um, tool that can be utilized and that's really going to help um, with circulation. Um, your, um, your body is um, recirculating or, um, you know, uh, regulating itself um, whenever you have your legs literally up the wall. Um, it's having to recirculate due to gravity. Um, and this is also aligning your spine um, and you're getting a lot of weight off of um, impactful joints like ankles, knees, and hips. Um, and it, again, can take away a lot of environmental stimuli as well um, whenever you're just staring at a ceiling. <laughs> um, so this would probably be my go-to poses. Awesome. And, and I also you have, um, uh, I know uh, Erin had to step away for just a moment with her video and she also, we're, we're very grateful that Erin um, is a fantastic resource for wellness for us. Um, she's a yoga instructor too. And she shared with me that um, for a lot of our kids and even for ourselves, using the legs up the wall pose in the evenings for like five minutes can actually help get more restful sleep. And if you're struggling, go to sleep, which so many of our high school students, especially you know, our teenagers really struggle to wind back down doing five minutes with legs up the wall really makes a massive difference. So it's very cool to see what we can use and practice in the classroom and in our homes, you know, whether it's daytime or evening, it's very applicable in so many different ways. Um, 
So, oh, there she is. Hi, Erin. Um, said it went better than I could have. That's exactly right. I, I practice it many times myself, and it helps so much to fall asleep at night. And we, we know we all need that extra, that extra sleep so that we can be bright shining stars in the daytime, because sometimes it's a little bit tougher to do so. Um, all right, so next, compassionate curiosity. Um, how often do you recommend that children, adolescents practice yoga? Mm, that's, that's a really good, that's a, a great question. Um, so it really brings me back to how yoga is perceived in, in this world in general. Um, a lot of times you hear the word yoga and you automatically assume um, poses. And um, that's not um, the only thing that yoga is. Yoga has, um, you know, eight branches. And as you could see in the class that we just did, it, you know, the poses are not the only thing that we focus on. We focus on mindfulness and meditation and breath work. Um, and I think that whenever we think of yoga in, in terms of everything that it encompasses, not just the poses, that it, it really is something that should be practiced daily. Um, the poses are just another physical tool that help us um, really correlate our mind, body, and spirit, or soul. Um, and um, it's just as important as the others, um, but it's not our only tool. Um, so again, every day, mindfulness, meditation, um, breath work, and, um, you know, the other um, asanas, um, you know, with the, with the, with the asanas, you get the physical benefit. Um, the karma yoga that, um, I mentioned in the class is, the, you know, the selfless service. So, um, you know, doing something nice for someone else without the expectation of benefit, benefiting yourself um, and how good that makes somebody feel. Um, and then pranayama, the breath work, um, controlling your breathing. That is literally your, um, your most portable self-management tool um, is to be able to control your breathing. And that um, really that improves your circulation and releases toxins that are built up within our body and improves our posture and our ability to focus and concentrate and um, really be present. Um, so obviously pranayama is <laughs> something I hold dear, dear and true to my heart. And then there's um, satya, which is truthfulness. So um, we kind of think of it as, your word is like a bird. Um, once it's said, it's gone and it's flown away. Um, and you really need to be mindful of what you're saying, um, as well as how you're saying it, not just to others, but to yourself as well. Um, the, you know, the things that we say to ourselves and our um, self-talk really needs to be um, something that we, um, uh, we control and um, are mindful of as well. Right, thank you so much. I just, I adore you. And I know that your karma, your karma yoga is off the scales all the time, especially as of today. Um, being able to share it, share this with us. And it's just so lovely to be able to hang out and, um, and, and share these tips and tricks. Cause like you said, there's things that, that we can do that exist within us to help us to feel more authentically ourselves and at peace with our surroundings and so many times, you know, before our tests, maybe we get really stressed out or overwhelmed. How brilliant would it be for whether we're virtual or we're face to face to take some time to do that, to do some breath work right before, you know, an exam or if we've got a pop quiz, you know, I think that would be a, a really great place to do that. And then the kids can go home and, and teach their loved ones um, how to do those things too. So last, last question, um, you know, I know that today we're we're all at our homes or in our offices and we're comfy. Um, where, any tips or tricks for doing yoga off of the mat? Because we all had our, you know, had our mats today and um, had, you know, those particular tools, but any other tips? Yeah, of course. Um, again, mindfulness, meditation, um, and breath work are really the three things that um, I like to keep in mind whenever um, I'm off of my yoga mat. Um, so some of the um, mindfulness um, tricks that some caregivers and teachers can use um, 
uh, let's see, the karma yoga that was mentioned um, and um, where they were asked to, you know, help a teacher by doing X, Y, and Z or help parents by setting the table or walking a dog. Um, those are some ideas of some karma yoga. Um, also, homework, as we like to call it. Um, and then there's also um, mindfulness little games that can be done, like Orange You Grateful. I know that we talked about this in our um, our um, last, what was it, Wellness Wednesday chat, where you pass around an orange or an orange ball, um, and or even virtually, like, you know, pass pass the fruits and um, say what you're grateful for. So orange you grateful and whoever the whoever has the ball or piece of fruit gets to say what they're grateful for. And, it, you know, that brings mindfulness into the present moment or um, where they get to really share um, how they feel. And then meditation, you know, the piece begins with me. It can be done anywhere and everywhere. Um, we like to give that meditation homework as well where um, every day that ends in why or every day that the kids brush their teeth they have to um, meditate they have to do their piece begins with me and if that doesn't resonate for them or their older children those mantras can be specific ones um, that they come up with or positive affirmations that help them get through the day and um, this meditation like you said could be done before a test um, or um, you know, before having to sit for long periods of time, um, you know, sitting down and really saying, I am ready to learn. Um, this is, I would say, probably doing the emotional freedom techniques, um, the EFT, the tapping and the shaking, um, which helps regulate your central nervous system and really regulates your um, fight or flight response, which kind of increase whenever we might have some testing anxiety and fears and um so after you do some shaking and tapping and you know shake the sillies out shake the jitters off let's get comfortable it doesn't have to be a long every little cell in my body song but it can literally just be some shaking and some tapping um, before we sit down and we practice the meditation where we say i'm ready to learn and it hones us in um, on whatever task we're about to do um, and then again, with the breath work, there's um, um, so many different types of pranayama. Um, you've got the bunny breath that we did today, which is really going to um, heighten and bring, um, bring somebody's attention to the present moment. Whereas, um, you know, the square breathing where you, um, somebody can draw a square, um, so you count to four, one, two, three, four, you inhale on that first line, and then you exhale one, two, three, four on the next line. Inhale one, two, three, four, and then to close off your, your square, exhale one, two, three, four. So that's like square breathing, also counting to four. Um, so those are just some off the bat breathwork pranayama things that we can, tips to take off of the yoga mat. That's fantastic, Lauren. Um, I really, I really appreciate the notion that you don't have to have a yoga mat to be able to do it. Uh, you don't have to be a yoga instructor. You know, you can use our resources within BASC or the wealth of resources that are available um, to us on the web. And you were gracious enough to say that we could maybe connect with some music that we could offer to our community to be able to use at their leisure, whether it's in the classroom or at home. And I really hope that everyone does their karma yoga this evening. I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful. I'm, you're just a, a wonderful human in every way. And it was really awesome to have you today. This was as an adult doing, you know, kids yoga, it was so freeing to just be silly, you know, and I could see doing the EFT work with my clients, right. And, and just listening to whatever music maybe they pick or helping them to pick a mantra and doing the same in the classroom. So I think that these tips and tricks and tools and, um, and all of that are just going to be fantastic for us to be able to share and I truly hope that everyone that joined us today appreciated this opportunity and had fun and learned a good bit. We will make sure to have the, uh, this um, 
uh, webinar today available to you all on our YouTube site. Um, so please like and follow us on Facebook, connect with us on YouTube. We are BASC, Behavioral Alliance of South Carolina. So you can just do at BASC, hashtag BASC. And just last minute, thank you to Lauren. Thank you for everyone that came and namaste. Namaste. All right. Bye everyone. Have a fantastic evening.